Hey, what's up, VC? It's Steve again, Harmless Rebel, and I got a little VCLT that I'm going to share. Um, actually, let me open it up while we're talking here. This is from uh, Senior Dave Rico from the Vinyl Vault. I will put a link down below. Uh, if you're not subscribed to his channel, you definitely should be. Great guy. Um, love his videos. Um, just give me a second. I think I know what this is, uh, but you never know. You never know when uh, somebody's going to slip something in there that you're not expecting. So uh, just kind of jump into it. First of all, uh, thanks, Dave. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, also, a, a really cool here. He's always got some cool VCLT stickers and stuff, and this one is uh, kind of cool. Let me cover up the uh, address, but uh, got the uh, VCLT right there, which is pretty cool. All right, so let's see what we got here. Yep, first and foremost, uh, Molly Hatchet. Um, I have this on CD and cassette. Um, I didn't have it on vinyl. Uh, he had mentioned that he had a, a spare copy of it, and I said I was definitely interested. So um, I was real happy to get that one. Uh, it's uh, not my favorite. It's actually my second favorite of their albums. But uh, then he also sent uh, Stone Blue from Fog Hat. Come on, it's Fog Hat. You can't go wrong. And then, last but not least, Cheap Trick at the Budokan. Um, I love the Budokan. I, I've been there a number of times. Uh, I think it's... Uh, I, don't, I can't think of any bad albums. Uh, every album from the Budokan seems to have been a uh, great album from every band that's done it. Um, it's kind of like, uh, what is it, the Hammersmith in England that everybody plays at, uh, does live, uh, regardless, um, Cheap Trick, I'm not a huge Cheap Trick fan, um, I, I have a couple of other records, actually I'm about to show one of them, uh, this is, I'm gonna add an update onto this instead of doing a two minute, uh, video, um, this is just some other stuff that, uh, some of us I've, I've had for quite a while, uh, you know, like the first one here, uh, NXS Kick. I've actually had this for like seven or eight months. Uh, I picked it up as part of a collection. Uh, I, I finally just went through my inbox and listened to it. Um, I bought this one on vinyl actually for the first time in 86 or 87. It had to be 87, that's when it came out. Uh, when I was in Germany, um, I remember buying that one at the Base Exchange. So, NXS Kick. Uh, the Firm. Mean Business. This was, uh, I believe, their second, and I think it was their last album. But uh, uh, the firm is Paul Rogers and uh, uh, Jimmy Page. Um, great band. I wish they would have done some more stuff together, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, this is another one I've had for quite a while. Um, Shaved Fish, uh, John Lennon and Plastic Ono Band. This is a... Uh, it's a comp from 1980, I don't even remember what year it was. It may have been late 70s uh, when this one came out. I just don't remember. But, uh, I mean, it's got all of uh, John Lennon's hits on it. Uh, a really good album, definitely worth having. Give Peace a Chance, Cold Turkey, Instant Karma, Power to the People, Mother, uh, Imagine, Whatever Gets You Through the Night, Mind Games. Um, killer album. Next up, this one blew me away. I just kind of grabbed this. It was a, uh, a half-off day at Goodwill. Um, and I was familiar. I, I knew the name of the band. But I had never bought anything from them. And I was really blown away by how good it was. This is uh, Booker, T and, Booker T and the MGs. The uh, Booker T set. Um, it's got Michelle... Miss Robinson, Lady Madonna, um, just uh, every song on it, it just blew me away how good this was. And it's on, this one's on stacks. Next up, uh, I'll save those for later. This was another great album that I wasn't familiar with. I knew most of the songs from it, um, simply because I have their, uh, 
anthology on CD, but this is uh, Skinner's first and last. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with this, this was actually Leonard Skinner's first album that was never released. Um, after uh, after the plane crash, um, I want to say the next year, they they finally went back and released this. Yeah, this was released in seventy eight. It's just killer, killer early Skinner. You know, I, I really dig this album. Um, I'm a big fan of Skinner. It, it drives me nuts the songs that they're popular for. You know, Sweet Home Alabama, um, Free Bird's a great song. Don't get me wrong, but you know when you think of, when you mention Skinner to people, they think Sweet Home Alabama, and I think that's probably one of the worst songs that they put out. Um, they were such an amazing band, and the guitar work w was phenomenal. Um, and I, I just don't think they get enough credit for all of the. I mean, their entire discography is just amazing. So, um, next up, a little bit of new order. I found this one in pretty much mint condition. I, I was pretty happy. Um, Brotherhood. New order has always been a uh, favorite of mine. From the eighties, next up, Stiff Little Fingers. I have talked about them a bunch of times. I've got four or five Stiff Little Fingers albums. Um, I want to say that I, I've. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever owned this one on vinyl before, but this is. Uh, Go for it. Uh, again, I, I'm just a big fan of, not just Stiff Little Fingers, I'm a big fan of the, uh, of the, uh, the Northern Ireland scene. Uh, most of the bands from that area, whether it's Roof Rex, which I've talked about before, Stiff Little Fingers, The Undertones, um, all just great, great bands. Um, yes, Tormato. I may have showed this one before. I'm not 100% sure. I picked this one up about a month ago. Um, Illusion. Out of the Mist. I think this album is garbage. And I shouldn't say that. I mean, musically, it's okay. Um, I showed Armageddon. I believe it was Armageddon. A couple of months... Uh, maybe a month or two ago. Armageddon was kind of born out of... Um, now I'm drawing a blank. On, out of Renaissance. Um... Apparently, after Armageddon broke up, the guys from Renaissance went on with, uh, what's her name, Jane Ralph, and they put out this album, or they, they created this band, Illusion. I just didn't think it was good at all. I, I, it was most of the stuff from... Sorry about that. I got a phone call there. Um, I was talking about Illusion, Out of the Mist. So this album is, is basically made up of a couple of members of... Um, uh, so basically Armageddon was made up of members of Renaissance. Um, after Renaissance broke up, a couple of the members got together and uh, put out this with uh, Jane Ralph, who's Keith Ralph's wife uh, from the Yardbirds. Keith Ralph was also in Armageddon. Um, so anyway, uh, his wife is in here. Um, it's okay. Uh, I wouldn't recommend buying it. You know, I mean, I paid four bucks and I think that's too much for it. You know, um, it is what it is. If anybody's interested in that, if anybody's a fan of illusion, it just wasn't for me. Let me know. Maybe we can work something out with that one. Uh, picked this one up. This was a record store day release last year. I picked it up for eight bucks. Um, a couple weeks ago, um, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. I liked the movie. Uh, this is on red vinyl. Uh, there's a couple of uh, really good songs on here. Uh, Under My Thumb from the Stones. Um, all the, the Sex bob uh songs are pretty good. T-Rex. Um, Black Lips. I mean, there's a bunch of great songs on there. And, you know, that thing still goes for 15, 20 bucks. So when I saw it for eight bucks, I couldn't pass up on it. Uh, speaking of Cheap Trick at the Budokan, I, I ran across a, a copy of Dream Police, which I've had on CD. I wasn't really looking for on vinyl, um, but I ran across this copy. It's a uh, white label promo. So I went ahead and uh, grabbed it. You want to talk about bands that are huge in Japan, I tell you what, this is probably one of the most popular bands in Japan. Um, of course, Mr. Big as well. 
Um, Cheap Trick was obviously pretty big here in the U.S. as well, as opposed to Mr. Big, who uh, never saw the kind of fame here that they saw in Japan. But uh, it seems like uh, Cheap Trick is always playing, was always in Japan uh, when I was there. Um, also, uh, Talking Heads, 77. Um, this is not my favorite Talking Heads album, but it does have one of my favorite songs, Psycho Killer. And I think I paid six bucks for it in excellent condition. It's a first pressing, so um, definitely worth picking up. Uh, this one kind of blew me away. Um, 902, uh, 9012 Live, the solos from Yes. Um, I thought that this was going to be 90215 Live when I picked it up, so... I mean, I had seen this before and passed up on it a bunch of times. And it's got, I think, two songs, maybe one song from 90215. And the rest of it are just amazing solos from the band. And, and I was really blown away by how good this is. I, I, I definitely recommend anybody uh, pick this one up if you run across it. It was just, it was really, really good. Much more than I expected. Uh, Relayer from Yes. Just, uh... Working on the discography there. This is actually one of my uh, favorite of their album covers as well. Next up, uh, Boston. This is their uh, solo album or their uh, their first album. I picked up their second one too. I thought it was in the stack. It's it's around here somewhere, but uh, I don't need to go into that. Everybody's pretty familiar with uh, with that band. Uh, the Kinks, Low Budget. This is kind of a weird one. Um, the Kinks touch on so many styles on this album. There, There's some that's uh, more classic rock sounding. There's even a couple songs that, that I would almost go as far as to say are hard rock. Um, pretty good album. I, I, you know, I, I'm hit and miss on The Kinks. Some of their stuff I really enjoy. Some of their stuff I just think is ridiculous. Um... This is a pretty good album, I, you know. I, I recommend checking that one out if you don't, if you haven't checked it. Out. That was actually, I think, that was their biggest hit of, of the the seventies and eighties, if I remember correctly. Uh, this was really good. Uh, Doc Holliday, Doc Holliday rides again. If you like southern rock, you're gonna really like this album. This was this was really killer. Uh, so I don't listen to a lot of big band. Um. I shouldn't say I don't listen to a lot. The only big band I listen to is this gentleman, and this is uh, Glenn Miller. And uh, this is actually a, uh, a two-album set. Um, I'm a big fan of Glenn Miller. Not just uh, his music, his story as well is pretty amazing. Um, but uh, this is the Glenn Miller band. I think this was in... This came out in 1960, but uh, I want to say this was all recorded in the late 30s. Yeah, 39 and 40. All of the songs were recorded in 39 and 40. Uh, amazing. And then, and then the uh, second album of this, which I also have, is... This is Glenn Miller Yesterday. <laughs> then they have Glenn Miller Today, which actually came out before this album. But what it is, is it's, it's uh, Glenn Miller, uh, the Glenn Miller Orchestra, uh, under their new leader after Glenn Miller disappeared uh, during World War II. Um, this is the... That, that one's the better of the two. I... I Glenn Miller is the greatest. If you guys, this is one of those albums, uh, even those of you that aren't familiar with Glenn Miller or don't know who Glenn Miller is, if you were to put on one of his albums, I guarantee you would know 80% of the songs. I mean, that's how that's how big his music was. And and if you believe a lot of the rumors about uh, some of the stuff he was doing in Germany um, to... Uh, turn the youth against the Nazi party. I mean, it, it, there's some pretty amazing stuff when you get into his whole story. <coughs> Next up, Brownsville Station. Yeah, this was a great album. Um, I have had this one for a long time and just never listened to it. Uh, obviously, it's got Smoking in the Boys' Room, which uh, is probably their biggest hit. Um, there's also a really good cover on here of Sweet Jane from... Uh, uh, the Velvet Underground, which I've talked about before. That's that's my favorite Velvet Underground song, and they do a, a, a really good job of covering it on here. Uh, but the whole B side, the whole side too, is really good. The A side, there is there. There's a couple really good songs, and, and then the rest is kind of okay. But the, the, the side, the second side, is really where it's at for uh, on this one anyway. So, Bronzeville Station. Next up, uh, there's actually two of these. I bought one of them today. 
Uh, and I haven't listened to it yet, but the uh, the other one, or the I bought this about a week and a half ago. Um, this is Robin Trower. Um, Bridges and size is it? Bridges and size? Bridges of size. Um, this album's amazing. I, I had never, <coughs> I had never heard uh, Robin Trower. Um, I, I've seen his his name around for years. I you know, um, on the Facebook page, I see people throw up this album and this album pretty regularly. Uh, but I had never listened to it, and then uh, and maybe it was Scott. I don't remember who it was initially. Was talking about Robert Trower and, and how his guitar was reminiscent of Jimi Hendrix, and uh, so the next time I saw it, I, I went, I picked this one up, and man, this is a great, great, great album that I highly recommend. Uh, my two favorite songs were uh, "Bridge of Sighs" and "In This Place." I was blown away by how good this album is, um, and I can't wait to listen to this one. I just picked this one up today. Um, I picked this one up for for three bucks at a thrift store. Uh, I'm sorry, at a uh, at a uh, antique mall. Uh, this is twice removed from yesterday, um, so I'll be giving that one a spin probably as soon as we're done with this video right here. But uh, and it was a disappointment. Um, <coughs> I found out that he was playing, he played here this last Thursday, and it was already sold out. The tickets were only like 35 bucks. Um, so then I went on to StubHub and, you know, checked a couple other places to see if I could buy some tickets, and everybody wanted like 90 bucks for them. So, I, you know, I wasn't willing to spend that, that, that money to go to the concert. The 35 if had I caught the tickets in time, would have been awesome, but... Uh, Robert Trower, again, if you haven't heard Robert Trower, uh, go out and buy his stuff right now. Um, like I said, especially uh, Bridges of Size. I mean, that thing is amazing. Uh, and then, uh, let's see. I'm going to do... I got these last two here. Yeah, let me show you a couple more that I picked up today at the Antique Mall. Um, I also, speaking of Molly Hatchet, uh, I picked up uh, Take No Prisoner. I thought that I had this one, but then I looked on my phone, on my... Uh, um, I have, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Discogs, the link on my phone, and I looked it up, and, and I didn't have it, which, uh, but regardless, I paid six bucks for it. Just working to build that collection. I also picked up Deep Purple and Rock, which I was, they also had, uh, well, I'm not going to get into that because I already have it, but, uh. And that is on the uh, green Warner Brothers label. It needs to be cleaned, but it doesn't look like there's any scratches or anything on it. So uh, I paid $7 for that one. I also, well, I'll save those for my metal update. Uh, and then uh, the last one I picked up today was uh, Eddie Money. I'm not a huge Eddie Money fan. He's got a couple songs that I dig. Uh, this is the Japanese pressing uh, with the OB intact. It's in excellent condition. Uh, and, and for the deal I got, I couldn't pass up on it, you know. Um, there's a couple people here in the VC that I know uh, will be interested in this. So uh, I'll be sending out a couple of uh, messages today. But uh, <coughs> And then the last two. I picked these up a couple of weeks ago. Um, I don't remember where I got these, but I got them for under 10 bucks a piece. Uh, and I couldn't pass up. Uh, first was more Pink Floyd. I was missing this. I'm, I'm not a fan of this album, but it is it, it is a hole in my collection. Um, this is a original motion picture soundtrack. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm not really. That's probably my least favorite of all of the the Pink Floyd albums. And then uh, probably my number four or five pick for them is uh, Dark Side of the Moon from 1973. Um, I have a copy of this, but the cover is just in shitty condition. Um, the vinyl plays uh, pretty nice, but it's it's scuffed up pretty good. This one is uh, VG Plus all day long. I don't know if you can see how good. I wish the inserts were here. They're not. That's the only bad thing I can say about this album. Um, but man, it's just in immaculate condition. <laughs> I don't know if you can see how shiny that thing is. I, I mean, I was just really blown away 
by the condition. It, it sounds amazing. There's almost no background noise. Uh, again, it's it's uh, a first U.S. pressing, so to find it for under ten bucks, I was just completely blown away. So I will probably be giving that other copy to my younger brother next time I go to Florida because he's a big Pink Floyd fan. So that's pretty much it uh, for this update. Um, I hope everybody has a good one and uh, take care. Bye bye, VC.